That was um, the picture that was texted to me when I was playing tennis. It certainly caught my attention. Um, I, I was amazed that he was alive, let alone awake and talking. This is passing six inches through the face, just underneath the skull, all the way to the back of the neck. This is, can you play this? If it missed the critical structures like the brain itself, the eye, the spinal cord, which it had to have been if he was awake and talking to us, we were most worried about the blood vessels in the brain. Can you play that again there, Jeremy? So you, this is the carotid artery in the brain. And then let's see the next picture. Should be, that's the same one. This is the vertebral artery. So these are two critical blood vessels that go to the brain. They essentially supply that entire half of the brain. And this thing is immediately adjacent to them. So we were very worried about significant vessel injury. If this was a millimeter closer, it probably would have been unsurvivable injury if it poked right through the carotid. But it went right next to it and right next to the vertebral artery. That trajectory is essentially one in a million. I, I just can't believe that. When you put those two things together, this is the carotid artery, this is the vertebral artery, and this is the device passing immediately adjacent to those vessels. Uh, we were worried about causing injury because of the end of this thing. It, ha it has this feature on it where we were concerned that if we're pulling it back, it didn't permanently damage those vessels on the way in, but it might yeah. on the way out. There was a lot of consideration as to whether or not we should try to make an incision at the back of the neck here and cut this part off, but it looked pretty significant as though it would be hard to cut that. We were also worried about the depth that it had passed through the body. How hard would it be to pull it out? Um, we had made a number of preparations uh, to help us get it out if it was going to prove to be stuck. So simply protecting his airway was a big undertaking because you can't put the breathing tube in the way you typically would because this thing is passing right through the musculature of the jaw so he couldn't really open his mouth in a way that allowed it to be safe to pass the breathing tube. So they were prepared to do an emergency surgery on the neck to, to protect his uh, windpipe. Fortunately though they were able to place it through the nose and that allowed us to start gathering these pictures that are perfect visualization of the vessels. And then when it became clear that the vessels themselves were not immediately traumatized by the device, then we were thinking how can we get it out and not tr traumatize it on the way out. So the plan was to directly visualize those vessels as we're pulling on this thing. And in preparation, the ENT team with Dr. Kakarala and Dr. Wood did a pr preliminary dissection of the blood vessels in the neck so that as we were pulling it out, if it uncorked a substantial amount of bleeding, we would be prepared to control it as quickly as possible. So then this is um, the action of, of removing it in its entirety as those vessels were being protected from both the inside and the outside with catheters and by surgery. Uh, so at the end of all of it, the number of people involved was very substantial. But the most impressive thing about the story is how this thing could pass so deep through that part of the body and not hit something critical. I, I don't know how the kid could be so lucky. This view shows here the entry site just underneath the eye in the cheekbone. And then if you swing it around to the back, it went through this little channel bypassing every vessel along the way. That's one in a million.